I almost know nothing about Legends of Runeterra. Let's see how good I am at guessing how good Legends of Runeterra cards are. What are the two mechanics? If I remember correctly, the hook one is like you get to pick who defends. Yeah, and the other one is new. It's called Formidable. What that means is this unit strikes with its health. So oh. that also means if this unit takes two damage, it'll be a zero one. It only has one attack. Okay, so two mana zero three. Two mana zero three sounds really weak. Give me the baseline stats for like a three mana card. For a three mana card, baseline would be a three four. All right, I'm going to say this card's absolutely garbage. I have to th keep in mind being a defensive minion is pretty decent because at least you can block damage. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with it's not the worst card in the world, but it's pretty bad. Why you would want to play this over anything else. Okay, this is actually one of the best cards in the game. <laughs> no way, dude. We're starting off so bad. No. <laughs> okay, I, I will have to say one thing. This is different from Hearthstone. In Rune Terror, it actually really matters what region a card is in because you can have the best card in the game. If it's in a terrible region, then it doesn't really make sense because you still have to pair it with other regions to make it good. So the synergy matters a lot here. For example, oh, if you okay. pair this card with something like Freljord, which is really good at giving health buffs, it suddenly becomes like one of the most broken cards in the game. Okay, but it's also yeah. just, it is still really good oh. in Demacia, the region it's in. It looks really weak. Yeah, hey, dear, it's one of the best cards in the game. <laughs> the bat. And this card is literally like twice as good as the champ or that archetype. The Undying. Three minute two, two, last breath. That's when they die, right? Yep. Revive me at the next round start and grant me plus one, plus one for each time I've died. That's a straight up card. This is pretty good. The fact that it can't block is pretty bad. You basically have to kill this yourself in order for it to get stronger, which feels weak. I believe leave their silences in Runeterra. Yeah, I'm, I'm so scared after the first one here. <laughs> I feel like this is bad. I feel like the fact that they, they can't block this card feels like it's just not doing enough. It's a fan favorite oh. card, but it's it's never seen competitive play. People like to experiment with it, but it's never really been good. Yeah, and it starts as a 2-2. So your opponent never wants to block it because if it dies, it just comes back bigger. But so you want to get to that point where they're big enough that your opponent is forced to block, but it's just too slow. It never really gets to that point. That's a cool idea, though. The arsenal an eight mana, eight, six. When I am summoned, grant me a random keyword for each allied landmark you destroyed this game when you destroy an allied landmark bring me a random key what is a landmark landmarks are not units and not spells just non-interactable cards on the field and they either have an effect or they have a countdown effect and a countdown is for example in two turns summon a 2-2 and then it explodes okay. and that will be a destroyed landmark and it's a yordle i don't know how much that really matters it does i'm gonna go with this card is probably on the better side it looks like it could be a pretty good finisher for a deck you're gonna put this into a deck that you run a bunch of landmarks in i guess this really comes down to our landmarks good so I'm going to go with it's pretty decent, but not like meta breaking. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's it's a good finisher for a very specific deck. And this is also about what I said earlier, that regions really matter. The best landmarks in the game are in Shurima. So if you pair this card with Shurima, it's a very good finisher. The one thing I really am jealous of a Legend of Terra is you can look at the full art in game. I can't understand in 2022 how Hearthstone doesn't have that. A three minute four two. You're the top champion in your deck. Plus one, plus one on a random keyword. This is guaranteed to give at least a champion plus one, plus one. There's probably a spell or something that stops the minion from attacking, right? Yeah. In most games, probably people won't use that kind of effect on something like Hothead. I'm imagining that this card, when it's played, is guaranteeing your next champion plus one, plus one in a random keyword. And you get a 4-2 stat. How valuable is a plus one, plus one in a random keyword? Because you said the average stat line is a three minute, three, four. This yeah. isn't horrible. I would say this is pretty good. I think it really comes down to on how valuable a random keyword is. But I think just granting your champion another keyword and the bonus stats seems like it's pretty decent. Cards unplayable. <laughs> No way, dude. <laughs> First of all, you have to play this card and then attack with it. So you, you have to put it on the field. Then your opponent gets a turn and then you have to put this thing into combat. Uh, another thing is, is that Shurima and Battle City are not great at protecting their units. And then the third, which is probably the biggest reason why it's not good, is that you have to actually draw the champion that you just buffed up. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you don't know how deep in your deck your champion is. Yeah. Okay, so this is a spell, right? Yeah. Five mana, Tribeam Improbulator. When it increases by one, it's like it goes to like random two cost and then three cost follower. Is that how that works? Yeah, two damage, random two cost. I'm going to base this off Hearthstone. I feel like this card's absolutely garbage. The fact that it's slow means your opponent can counter it too, right? It's not really counterable unless you specifically play like a counter spell. Slow means you have to do it before combat, right? Yeah, you can't do it during combat. I mean, I'm second guessing myself here, but I'm pretty sure this card's bad. In order for this card to be at least decent for five mana, you would have to at least buff this up maybe twice, three times. You have to have this in your hand and then you also have to play a bunch of three cost cards for this to actually get improved. So I think it's bad. This card Please. has been meta-defining no, for one Shut specific no, deck dude. for like one and a half year. There, there, It goes into exactly one deck and that deck has never been outside of tier one, except maybe like at one point a high tier two or tier two deck. There are a lot of good three <laughs> mana cards that go into that deck. But in Runeterra, okay. if you can remove like one unit in one action with the damage from the spell and then summon another unit for yourself, it's really, really good. Okay, so how many times do you have to upgrade this for this card to be like good? Yeah, I would say four or five times at least. I guess you don't always 
always play this on turn five because it's a spell and it's always going to be a good swing turn. Yeah, you, you don't play this on five at all. All right, so this is a landmark. Targon's Peak. This is from Ionia, I think. It's from Targon. Targon. Okay, just kidding. I'm stupid. Reduce the cost of a random card in all players' hands to zero this round. You're putting this card in a deck specifically with very high cost cards. You're high rolling. This is five mana do nothing, but then you get a huge swing turn potentially after. And it also really depends on what your opponent is playing as well. I think this card's bad. I could see it being good in a very, very particular matchup. Yeah, this card is really ambiguous. It goes into one very specific deck. And sometimes when the meta is just right for that deck, it's very, very good and very frustrating. But overall, I would say this card is pretty average. It's not bad. It's not really good. The Howling Abyss, six mana round start. Read in hand a random level two champion that's not in your hand deck or play. I'm going to say this card's bad because I think champions require you to build a specific deck around them. Like they're not just something you just put in randomly. Any champion's just good to fit into like any deck. Like you usually have to build around it. It is a level two champion though, right? That's the upgraded version of it. Yep. <sighs> okay, hold on. This got a little bit spicy here. This can't be good. There's no way this is good. You're correct. This is also referred to as uh, the Hearthstone Abyss by Runeterra players sometimes because of the high roll potential. <laughs> but yeah, it's not very good. But there have been some really heavy control decks that just want to remove units all the time. And then they have this as their win con. This is what I would like to call a YouTube content card. My entire YouTube foundation is built upon this card. So yeah. <laughs> Pantheon. Third keyword is Faded, which means that if you target a Faded unit with a spell like a buff, they get an extra plus one plus one. Uh, the first one is Overwhelm, which means that if they do excess damage, and the other one is Barrier. Uh, unlike in Hearthstone, Divine Shield, I'm pretty sure lasts forever in Hearthstone. In Rune Tower, it's only one turn. So this is a four mana three two with Divine Shield basically when you play it, but then it gets a little bit better when you buff it. Okay, Pantheon level one doesn't look super great. Four mana four three. Once Pantheon is leveled up, grant me a random keyword for each round you've targeted allies this game. Okay, that has to be nuts. Two mana Pantheon Shield Vault. It's slow. Grant an ally plus one plus one and stun an enemy create a pantheon in your deck the, the level one is not super great the level two pantheon has to be really nutty granting plus one plus one and sending an enemy for two mana has to be pretty good all right i'm gonna go with this card's good it's very good there's only one pantheon deck actually some champions are pretty flexible like zoe they go into multiple decks there's only one pantheon deck you just have pantheon as your win con and pantheon when he comes down level will usually win you the game on that same turn so yes he is very good sleight of hand what does plunder mean plunder means this effect is active if you have damaged the enemy nexus this turn so you get to take the card from their hand i guess you don't get to choose but, you get a random but you, you do take the card from their hands yep. dealing damage to the enemy nexus before you play a slow spell in hearthstone getting a random card from your opponent's hands often not good enough because you're building a deck to utilize that card efficiently and if my deck is not the same archetype or can utilize that card, it's usually garbage. So I'm going to go with this card is probably about average, but I would say it's a little bit more on the weaker side. It's really bad. It's never seen play. Mini more. So where's the burst spell? It means you play it and your opponent doesn't get a chance to react. Transform a unit into a 3-3 three, three mini mini T. Mini T have no text. That's, it's just a 3-3. Three, 3-3 three. Three, three, then you silence it. I'm trying to think of why you would have to silence it after it's been transformed. Like at least in Hearthstone, like for instance, like there's Polymorph, right? Which is just transform a minion into a sheet. Like it doesn't silence after it. Can you give me content? Context of what a good removal would be, like how much mana it would be. The best comparison would be Vengeance from Shadow Isles, which is a six mana fast speed spell, kill a unit. It's very versatile, and I would imagine if you're playing this, it's good in the deck that you're playing it in. The Rune Terror community has been going nuts over this card because it's so stupidly frustrating and powerful. What? I think why you're confused is exactly because of Polymorph in Hearthstone, because you take your turn on Hearthstone and your opponent can't react. It just happens. You might as well remove that unit and it'd be the same thing. One very popular card, for example, is Lee Sin, that will try to kill you in one turn. But if you silence and transform that Lee Sin, suddenly they, they don't get a chance to react to that. The Lee Sin is just gone because it's a burst speed and it instantly silences and transforms it, makes decks that revolve around one single champion to win the game unplayable. The, the, the interactivity in Rune Terra is a big deal. Yeah, I gotta, oh God, I think that's the parts of, uh, that's killing me on these reviews. Six minutes for a move a minion feels so slow, but I guess it's not. Like in Hearthstone, you can kill a minion with like one mana at this point. Seven mana, six, six, round end. If you damage the enemy Nexus this round, transform me into a mega T. Seven mana, eight, eight. What does impact do? When this strikes, it deals one damage to the enemy Nexus. Now at the start of every round, this will cast mini morph plus can't block. Both players rounds too, right? It's, yeah. Wait, this is, has to be insane. The mega one's really good. Is How weak is the mini one though? This card auto wins you games against like specific decks because your opponent is basically forced to play more than one minion at a time. This has to be insane. You have the exact same reaction as the entire Rune Tamer community, but it's actually not seen any play at all. No, wait, you. <laughs> I thought it'd be so funny to give you mini morph and then give this one. I'm sorry. <laughs>
<laughs> so one thing is that Minimorph can be played for spell mana, and this can only be played on turn seven, and you have to hit the enemy Nexus. This is kind of like a win more card. Gorlith, the unscalable. What's the tower looking thing? That's tough. That means they take one less damage from all source. Okay, nine minutes, zero, 10. When I'm summoned, swap my health and your Nexus health. I can't be blocked by enemies with less health than me. Wait, this is very spicy. Nine mana though. This could save you from losing, uh, but nine mana is very slow. Actually, I guess this could technically just like two shot your opponent. Your opponent needs remote. This feels really slow. I'm imagining that this card would be played more swapping the health with your Nexus because I feel like this card could almost be used as just a really good defensive measure so you don't just get burned out. I'm gonna go with this card is good in very niche situation. It's, it's too slow, but it has seen some play because it's really interesting that this card can both save you from aggressive matchups by like giving your Nexus 10 health, or you can try to win like mid-range matchups by just swapping all your Nexus health and creating like some unkillable monster that can't be blocked. But overall, it's too slow. Looking at a lot of these cards, it makes me jealous of what Hearthstone's doing right now, because wow, dude, that was, I suck. I think I gave you some pretty difficult cards to evaluate. <laughs> Give me one more card in your mind that's like easier to evaluate. And let's see how well I do. Trundle. I feel like this is bad. I tried to give you an easy one and I guess it wasn't no, that easy. Off, no. <laughs> if you're enjoying this video, I would really appreciate a subscription. It helps me out a ton. Thanks.